Вот здесь в нашей такой сугубо в основном женской цитологической аудитории, что очень приятно. Большое вам спасибо за то, что вы нашли возможность в субботу, в выходной день, приехать сюда, чтобы послушать наших спикеров. Я представлю вам сейчас участников нашей сессии. Значит, в первую очередь Наталья Николаевна Баяндина, врач-цитолог поликлиники номер три управления делами президента Российской Федерации. Наталья Юрьевна Полонская, городская Морозовская детская больница, врач КДЛ. Наш первый докладчик Аники Вандер Куплер, профессор-патолог лаборатории Патан Роттердам. Ольга Валерьевна Синицына, руководитель лаборатории группы э, компании «Мать и дитя». И я, Мария Ламбакаха, руководитель маркетинга департамента лабораторной диагностики и медицинской техники э, компании «Эрфарм». Мы сейчас попросим Аники взять микрофон. Аники, you are welcome. После двух докладов спикеров, пожалуйста, фиксируйте свои вопросы, и мы будем иметь возможность еще некоторой дискуссии и ответов на ваши вопросы. Good morning. I like to thank the organizers, first of all, for inviting me here in Russia. Unfortunately, I don't speak very good Russian, and uh, um, uh, you will hear the Russian translation if I don't speak too fast, apparently, so I will try to speak slowly, and uh, I hope we can communicate this way. So I am from the Netherlands. Um, uh, here you see... Um, uh, the hospital and, and our laboratory is located at the top floor of, the, of this hospital. But in fact, um, we are serving all the cytology and pathology of six uh, different hospitals in the Rotterdam region. Um, I feel very humble coming from a small country um, whereas uh, you uh, have such a vast country um, and for those of you who don't know exactly where the Netherlands is, I mean Moscow is completely at the east of Europe and we are actually completely at the west of Europe uh, opposite uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, so we still have around 17 million people so it is probably comparable with uh, the Moscow region our capital is uh, is Amsterdam um, we in our country we have three centralized screening programs uh, one for breast cancer uh, for women between 50 and 70 every two years we have one for colon cancer for both men and women uh, from, from the age of 60 to 75 every two years. Uh, and we have a cervical screening program, which is the oldest screening program for adults that we have, uh, which uh, starts at 30 and ends at 60. Uh, and uh, we will, I will give you some information about our cervical screening program. Um, cervical cancer is uh, not the cancer with the highest incidence rates in the Netherlands, but um, it is a cancer that happens at very young age, rather than uh, the majority of the cancers which happen at uh, later age. Um, and because of it affects mainly women before the age of 40, um, it, it is a very important group because they are economically active and um, uh, they raise children, they play a very important role in society. So uh, we still put a lot of uh, effort and energy in a good screening program for cervical cancer. Um, 
And here you see the effect of this screening program. Uh, on the y-axis, it is the mortality rate uh, of the population we that used to be around 10 per 100,000 before we started any screening. Um, and then in the mid-60s, we started uh, a sort of a spontaneous screening. Whoever wanted to go could go to a doctor and get a screening. Um, and that happened until uh, the mid-70s, and you can already see a drop in the mortality rate. And then in the mid-70s, we started regionally uh, an organized screening program uh, until the mid-80s. And as from the mid-80s, uh, we have a, a centrally organized uh, screening program for the whole nation. And since then, uh, we are around two to three per 100,000 for the mortality rate, which is one of the lowest in Europe. So the screening program has been extremely efficient um, in our country. Um, what, what makes a screening program efficient? That is not so easy to answer. And you can see uh, this information in this rather complicated slides, but slide, but I will try to explain it to you. In the yellow bars, you see the number of pop tests per year. And in fact, it means that some countries have very few pop tests per year, so they have a relatively long interval. And some countries have very many pop tests in a year, um, which means they have a very short interval. Uh, at the same time, you see the red dots, and they give um, uh, the mortality rate in the country. What, if, if a screening program uh, would be the only um, a signal for, um, getting, for the incidence rate, you would expect a higher uh, incidence rate in those countries who have a very uh, long interval. But in fact, it is the other way around. So, uh, uh, Finland and the Netherlands, for instance, have some of the lowest uh, mortality rates, whereas in fact they have a rather long interval for screening. Uh, whereas uh, Austria and Germany, who have a lot of uh, tests per, per lifetime of a woman, have also a relatively high mortality rate. Um, those differences cannot uh, easily be explained. Uh, the organization of the program is important. The cytology infrastructure is important. Um, and one of the things that we have best um, uh, investigated is the attendance rate, the coverage rate of the program. That is uh, extremely important. And that is best that is best seen in data from the United Kingdom. And the United Kingdom uh, had a, a relatively high uh, incidence rate of around uh, 15 per 100,000. Uh, and that in, they started a screening program in 1980. Um, and although they picked up a lot of um, uh, pre-malignant and malignant lesions, they never uh, uh, were able to drop their incidence rate. It, it remained relatively high until in 1988 they started what uh, the UK calls a national call and recall system. That means if a woman would not come to the doctor for her screening, she would get a reminder. Uh, and uh, from that day on, they saw the attendance rate, the coverage rate of the program go up from 40% to over 80%. And because of the increase in that coverage rate, then suddenly they saw a decrease in the incident rate of cancer. So the relation between the coverage rate and the incidence rate, the, the inverse relation, has been investigated in many countries and uh, has, is now considered one of the most important uh, reasons for a good screening program. We need to have as high a coverage rate uh, as possible. Uh, 
there are two types of uh, carcinomas in cervical cancer that we are looking for. Uh, one is uh, um, the squamous cancer, which uh, arises at, uh, at, the, at the ectocervix. Uh, and one is uh, the adenocarcinoma, which arises at, in the cervical canal. And both cancers um, uh, are picked up um, with the screening program. But the majority of the cancers is uh, squamous, and about one fourth uh, um, is uh, adenocarcinoma. The way the screening works uh, is in a stepwise uh, fashion. So we first have a, the first is a screening test, and uh, until now that has always been cytology. If the cytology is abnormal, we immediately go to um, the gynecologist for colposcopy and, um, uh, and biopsy. Uh, if the cytology is equivocal, if we're not sure is it uh, very abnormal or not, we call that in cytology ascus or low sill, we do a reflex test. And as a reflex test in general, we use uh, HPV. If the HPV is positive, we also continue for colposcopy and biopsy. If it is negative, we would follow up on cytology. Um, if colposcopy and biopsy show a lesion that's called SYN2 or SYN3 or cancer, uh, we would uh, uh, do an operation uh, uh, and a therapy uh, on the women. Um, as a therapy, there are two um, methods, uh, the conization as well as the leap. Uh, in both cases, uh, you take out a part of the cervix. In Europe, uh, we prefer the leap because uh, compared to the uh, uh, conization, um, the leap uh, has the highest chance uh, of a good pregnancy after um, the therapy. Sometimes, especially in the adenocarcinomas, the leap is not sufficient and we do a conization, but then the chance uh, of a good pregnancy afterwards is somewhat lower. Uh, currently, the prevention system of cervical cancer is, uh, consists of three different steps. Uh, the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary prevention. Um, and um, the primary uh, prevention nowadays is with young girls, usually at the age of 12 or 13, before they have their first sexual experience, uh, to have a vaccination. And uh, this is uh, in most countries um, now, um, it is, it is uh, carried out. The secondary prevention is uh, the cytology screening. Uh, even the vaccinated population must still be screened because vaccination is only for um, a limited uh, number of HPV types, uh, so it does not uh, prevent uh, all cancers. Uh, at the same time, uh, not all young women have been vaccinated, so the screening program uh, should still take place. And the third prevention is what we call the test of cure. Uh, and the test of cure takes place um, for women after they have been treated for a CIN lesion. Uh, and it usually consists of cytology uh, together with the HPV screening. Uh, the cytology test has, uh, over the last 10 to 20 years, undergone large uh, changes in most European countries. Um, um, we went from conventional cytology, where you directly put the cells on a slide, where the doctor puts the cells on the slide. We went to liquid-based cytology, where the doctor places uh, the, the cells in a vial and the, in the laboratory uh, the slide is being made. And uh, here you see the, the transition in the Netherlands uh, from the year 2000, uh, the first line, 
uh, about 95% of all the cytology samples is uh, conventional. Um, and the last column here is in 2011, uh, where only 2% of the, all the cases was conventional cytology. Uh, and the other two is the two types of liquid-based cytology that uh, are on the market. Um, in the Netherlands, uh, since 2010, in fact, um, there is 100% of liquid-based cytology. In the United Kingdom, uh, there is, uh, in 2008, since 2008, all the cytology is liquid-based. In Denmark, the same. In Norway uh, and Sweden, uh, it have been somewhat later in the change, but since 2014 and 16, um, the whole country is on liquid-based cytology. Uh, all other countries in Europe uh, do not have uh, centralized uh, national screening programs and um, the labs and the doctors uh, have a bit more uh, freedom to do what they want and you see that still some of them uh, prefer the conventional cytology but in general in 50 to 80 percent of all the uh, of all the patients is done with liquid-based cytology also in these countries. Um, the big advantage of this liquid-based cytology is that we have a very standardized sampling of cells. Uh, it's, um, it's still, you need a doctor who knows how to take a good sample, that is not replaced. But after the sample is taken, uh, the entire tip of the brush with the cells attached to it is put into the vial. The vial is closed by the doctor and sent to the laboratory. And then uh, this, the, the slides uh, are prepared and stained uh, in the laboratory. Now there's a new change coming up. Uh, at the moment, um, almost all the countries use uh, cytology as a primary screener uh, and um, uh, HPV uh, as, a, as a reflex test for those cases where uh, the ASCUS is uh, where the cytology is uh, equivocal. Uh, but there's now a second um, uh, movement that uh, HPV is going to be used as a primary test and cytology is the triage marker. Um, so um, as um, we will look into uh, what, how the division is within Europe into making this change. Uh, this is a map of Europe where you see uh, different colors in the different countries. And basically all the countries in red uh, have a, a cytology as a primary screening test until today. And uh, this is uh, Spain, Austria, Switzerland, the Czech Republic, uh, Bulgaria, Hungary, and Greece. Um, the countries in light green, um, that, um, those are the countries that mainly have cytology as a primary screening test, but in all these countries some activities, some regional activities and studies are underway uh, to see if they can use HPV as a primary test. And these countries are, for instance, the United Kingdom and France and Germany, Italy uh, and the Scandinavian countries. Uh, the pink countries are the countries that uh, are moving into what we call co-testing. Uh, so that you would do, as a screening parameter, you would do both the HPV as well as the cytology. And these are, for instance, uh, Romania and Portugal and Poland. Um, and then there are two countries and now, and those are the, the one in dark green, uh, and that is the Netherlands and Turkey, those are the two countries that have, uh, for the screening program now, 100% changed to HPV as a primary marker. If we, we want to look at some data from these two countries, it's very hard to use data from Turkey, because as you see in this slide, 
only the countries that have a dark green uh, color have a national screening program and thereby also data um, is being published of uh, this national uh, screening program. And Turkey, uh, other than very regional, very limited data, they don't have national data. So the only country now that is uh, uh, publishing uh, data about uh, a national screening program on HPV uh, is the Netherlands. And the Netherlands uh, started uh, 1st of January 2017 with primary HPV. Um, and the only data that uh, has been published so far is the data from the year 2017. So the things that have changed in the Netherlands since the introduction of HPV primary is that uh, the, in the, the, the cytology screening program was always based on a five-year interval. So the first slide for the women, the first test was done at the age of 30, and the last test was done at the age of 60, and then every five years. With the new screening program, we have a, a new interval the age of 30 to 40 is still every five years, just as it was before. But from the age of 40, if the HPV is negative, you skip the next one at five years and you go immediately to the age of 50. And the same at the age of 50, if your HPV is negative, you skip and you go to the age of 60. So if your HPV is, your high risk HPV is negative for your whole life, you will only have five. Um, five different tests. If at 40 or 50 the HPV is positive but the cytology is negative, uh, you don't skip uh, the one at 55 but you come back uh, at 55 or, or 45. So this 10-year uh, interval is only for HPV negatives. And here you see how the program uh, works uh, since uh, um, the HPV is used as the primary test. The woman is being invited uh, to go to her doctor. The doctor makes a liquid-based cytology sample and in the laboratory we test HPV. If the HPV is negative, the woman comes back five or ten years later depending on her age, as I just explained. If the HPV is positive, a slide is being made, a cytology slide, and the cytology slide is looked at. If the cytology is abnormal, and for those of you who know the terminology, that means ascus or above, um, this, the woman is sent immediately to the doctor for colposcopy um, and uh, biopsy, and if needed, uh, treatment. If the cytology is negative, the woman comes back after six months. After six months, she goes to the doctor again, and the follow-up is only cytology. So HPV is only used at the start. All follow-up is done with cytology. But if the HPV is positive and the cytology is negative, even after six months, um, you always come back after five years. There's no 10-year interval. And these are the data uh, from the first year. Um, an average of 9% of all the women um, was uh, HPV positive, with the highest level at the age between 30 and 35 years. Uh, they, in this uh, group, you have a, a positivity rate of 21%. Uh, of course, if you start uh, screening at even a younger age, before the age of 30, uh, you can expect uh, this number to be even higher. Um, we know that 80% uh, uh, of the women at some point in their life will get a high-risk HPV infection. Uh, that in itself is not, um, um, it's, it's not a disease and the women will will clear it, but if we want to use it as a screening parameter, you cannot use it before the age of 30, or actually 35, because this number is very high. For the Netherlands, this has 
also been a disappointment because when we started, when we decided to go to an HPV primary, uh, all the data suggested that we would have a 4% positivity rate. In the end, it was about double. Studies are always a bit different than reality. Um, and here you see the outcome. The outcome in terms of numbers of, uh, uh, of abnormalities picked up in histology. On the left side, you see all the data uh, from the old program. And the old program, it, it, it is the, from the, the average of the last five years. And here on the right, you see uh, the outcome of the new program. Um, If you look at, um, there are different colors here, um, and the, these are all histological diagnoses. Huh? So it's not cytology, it is the follow-up of the cytology. Um, the brown ones are the benign cases, which means they're completely negative. Um, the blue ones are the SIN1 lesions. SIN1 lesions are also considered benign and a false positive pickup for the screening program because it's an extremely low percentage that will eventually uh, go to uh, cancer. And the precancerous lesions are the SIN2 and, uh, and above, SIN2, SIN3 and cancer, and those are the green, dark purple and light purple cases. And you see that the number of SIN2+, plus, so that is this second category, has improved enormously in the new program. In fact, we have picked up 64% more SIN2 plus lesions in the new program. That is uh, also what we expected, which was one of the reasons to go to HPV. And it, it is an effect of the, the increased sensitivity of HPV over cytology. But there is also a negative side. It, it's always like that. You never only make um, uh, improvement. There's always a negative side to it. And the negative side is much more negative than we ever expected. Because if you look at the false, the false positive rate in the old um, uh, program. Uh, it was uh, here 68 and 90, uh, which is a total of 158 for the whole country. Um, and uh, that has changed to uh, 371 and 586, which is 957. So we have an increase in the false positive rate of 505 percent. And that is um, that has not been taken into the equation when we decided to start for a new screening program. But that is what happens if you go for sen a better sensitivity, uh, you easily lose on your specificity. And that is exactly what we see here in the data. Um, concluding, if I can make a summary of uh, a cytology screening uh, program compared to an HPV screening program. Um, then there are difference in differences in infrastructure. For the cytology screening program, you need microscopes. You need a good cytology education for uh, doctors. And for um, HPV uh, um, uh, primary screening, you need uh, automated systems. You need molecular biologists. So it's a different uh, or, uh, need for uh, infrastructure. The cost is different. Uh, of course, it all depends on numbers and your relationship with the industry. But in general, the cytology uh, is lower and um, the cost of the HPV screening program is higher. It is one of the reasons why the Dutch government decided if we go to HPV, we have to go to a higher interval in order to uh, be able to finance it. Uh, and of course, there's a difference in quality, as we just saw. There are issues with false positives and false negatives, basically in both. 
but the um, uh, cytology seems to have more uh, false negatives, whereas um, the um, uh, HPV screening program uh, needs to have uh, or shows to have more false positive. Uh, both have a very strong effect on the population as well as on the cost. Uh, there's also a difference in colposcopy rates. Uh, if you look at the data from the Netherlands, we have uh, almost threefold more uh, colposcopy rates uh, in the new program than in the cytology program. Uh, of course, it all depends on the triage, but compared um, when we go to HPV primary, uh, the colposcopy rates are definitely increased. Uh, they, and they can be very high depending on the prevalence. Um, so a country should uh, prepare for sufficient uh, colposcopists because these are highly trained uh, experts. It's not so easy for everyone to do a good colposcopy and it's very important for the um, effect of the screening program. An advantage of an HPV screening program is the possibility to do a self-sampling test. That is not possible for cytology because we need a very exact um, sampling of the transformation zone. But HPV is uh, much less specific and self-sampling is possible. And also in the uh, um, Dutch screening program, uh, self-sampling is offered for those women who do not uh, want to go to their doctor or have no time to go to their doctor. Um, there is a difference in what you screen for. Basically in cytology we are looking for precancer and cancerous lesion. With HPV we are screening for an infection an infection that causes most cervical cancers, but in itself, it's not a disease. Um, and because of this difference between an HPV screening and a cytology screening, uh, we need very good communication. Uh, the PAP test, as, as we usually call it in the Netherlands, the cytology test is, is a well-known cancer test in most countries. Whereas HPV is a sexually transmitted virus. And uh, the introduction needs very good communication. Communication to the women, but also communication to cytologists, to gynecologists, to oncologists. What do you do with a positive outcome? And um, how do you communicate that? This whole um, uh, communication issue has been taken extremely serious in the Netherlands. And the government has uh, put a lot of energy and a lot of money to communicate this correctly to the public. Um, there have been all kinds of flyers, uh, uh, articles in the, in the newspapers and in the women magazines. Um, but it now shows that it has been probably, it has been only partially successful. Because uh, we always had a relatively high coverage rate, attendance rate of the screening program. And in the new program suddenly that dropped around 10%. That is also something that is completely um, um, unexpected because uh, also the self-sampling has, uh, has been part of the new program and the whole reason for the self-sampling is that we wanted a higher coverage rate and now it shows that basically we have a lower one. So we have, there are a lot of things that, that we had not been uh, expecting and we see now that the other countries are waiting for the Netherlands to solve their problems before they are going to change themselves. Uh, something is not working. Can I go to the next one? Oh, there it comes. So, for the upcoming years in most of the countries it will remain cytology primary and HPV as a reflex test. Uh, at some point the nationally organized countries um, 
uh, will change to primary HPV uh, because of the higher sensitivity, but you see that everyone is waiting now for the Netherlands to solve their issues on false positives um, and um, looking at maybe a better triage uh, marker, uh, for instance, genotyping, which is not included in the current program. And we also see that uh, some of the countries uh, will offer co-testing, both HPV and cytology, for those people who can afford it, because it's relatively expensive. Um, basically what we see is now, uh, we, uh, most of the European countries are at liquid-based cytology, so we have all the cells in a vial, and it gives us enormous flexibility. And that has uh, always been an important reason to go to liquid-based cytology. We have the flexibility to go to multiple, uh, to, 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 a, to a very high quality slide, and we can easily make multiple slides for training. Uh, you have the option to use computer-assisted screening with the liquid-based slides. And, um, once you have the cells in a vial, you also have all the options to go to PCR techniques uh, and HPV. And that's exactly what uh, all of us are doing now. Um, the, 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 the cytology laboratory has changed forever. And uh, this is a, um, a picture of a current uh, cytology lab where you have everything automated uh, and the, the, the local um, uh, small labs that we had uh, like 10, 20 years ago is, is, is gone forever. We are going to uh, new technology, better technology, and uh, that's an enormous improvement. Oh. So the, this finishes my presentation. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Uh. Thank you so much, Aniki. Uh, what do you prefer, to have questions right now or after the second speaker will finish? How do you... I, I, I leave it up to you, Maria. I, I, if people have specific questions, it, it's... Uh... Okay, then we will ask... Yeah. yeah. Uh, do we have any questions to Annika? So she's ready to take the questions. So pl please, uh, so, uh, so the presenters always like it when the, there are questions so for them. It means that you are interested. Uh, it tells you that they are interested in what they are doing for you. And uh, so please, uh, no questions. Okay. Uh, um, they keep silence. So thank you so much, uh, really, for your uh, material and for your uh, lecture. Thank you. Um, uh, over to uh, uh, Olga Valerievna Senitsina, uh, head of the uh, lab service of uh, uh, mother and child. So 26 labs altogether. Uh, so the uh, so 26 laboratories include uh, uh, so then genetics, uh, morphology, and cytology there. And so Olga Valerievna uh, has a very interesting presentation that has to do uh, with uh, non-traditional uh, localizations uh, uh, that uh, we always discuss within the framework of uh, uh, liquid-based cytology. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much uh, for uh, the uh, uh, so for coming uh, 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 here just on Saturday. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to thank you for that. Uh, so setting this task, uh, uh, so to prepare this presentation, uh, 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 and uh, so it's called this non-gynecological uh, uh, forms of uh, liquid-based uh, cytology. And uh, so this is the uh, colon endometrium and uh, 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 and the colon. Uh, so what ha what has it got to do with gynecology? So that's why I decided to call it not cervix, uh, not a cervix, yeah. Anything else, but not the cervix. So just we just this is a pie. Uh, so we'll talk uh, about the uh, the changes uh, in the uh, anal, uh, the colon, uh, uh, and and then uh, the uh, uh, then certainly we'll talk about the malignancy in in women. So which is the cervix uh, and uh, the colon. Uh, and the anal uh, uh, channel, uh, so they just go he uh, head and head. 
and uh, so according to data of Moscow Oncological Institute, uh, uh, and uh, so then uh, it, it shows uh, the uh, the curve uh, that the dynamics uh, of the identification uh, of the growth uh, of these pathologies uh, of uh, colon, uh, rectal sigmoid, uh, anus, uh, and uh, so there is an increase of the rectum cancer uh, and uh, the uh, cervical cancer. So what about the re rectum? So it's so similar to the cervix, uh, and uh, so it would talk about uh, H HP, uh, HPV. So because it's epithelium, and uh, so then from flat to cylindrical is done at this uh, uh, at this at this zone, uh, in internal sphincter muscle. So this is very vulnerable. This is where uh, so then these uh, uh, neo formations appear, uh, the neo formations. Uh, this uh, an uh, anellan uh, in epithelial neoplasia. So from viewpoint of cytologist, uh, needs to be considered very carefully. So while some time ago, uh, so that examinations uh, uh, should be done uh, uh, at the age of more than 50 uh, so with a chronic uh, colitis, uh, uh, then uh, the rectum cancer and then mammal, ca mammal uh, 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 cancer. So then later, so they started to talk about the fractures of the anal channel and, uh, and other mm, and therefore, for the, this, this is the entry place of HPV. Uh, but uh, recently, two years ago, we uh, uh, there was a change uh, at, the, uh, at one of the most recent meetings, uh, so that if they have dysplasia of the cervical of cervix, can, has all the chances of uh, anal neoplasia of the anal channel associated with the HPV. <clears throat> so, should we go to the literature? Certainly, we see publications. You see that uh, 170 women uh, were researched, and we they had 17% of AIN, and 32% were HPV positive. Probability of uh, anal HPV dysplasia uh, with uh, uh, confirmed uh, cervical HPV is uh, four times higher than in women who don't. Uh, have dysplasia associated uh, infection. So in women uh, with anal HPV, uh, the probability AN carriers with HPV uh, from anal channel is 6.5 times higher. Another interesting study uh, on 95 patients and uh, 38 patients uh, showed the lesion of anal channel and uh, they virtually 80% of them were HPV associated. And 100 women in the third research, 16% with anal HPV, and out of them, 62 plus uh, had anal uh, 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 lesions. Uh, and it's not just Russia. So it shows it's not just Russia. And large-scale study was uh, made. Uh, so since December 12 to f February 14, and uh, it was a. Uh, mm, carried out in the U.S. Uh, clinics, women, diff different clinics, different social groups uh, were, uh, so two groups, uh, two high risk uh, groups uh, were made uh, with HP associated pathologies, 187 people, low risk group, women uh, who never had uh, any earlier pathologies, and uh, HIV infected d were not included into this study. And uh, these were the interesting results uh, that they got. 187 women, cytology, cervical cytology. Uh, you see how many normal, abnormal. Then uh, we look at the chart with abnormal, anal uh, cytology. And then look at the high-risk HPV and, uh, anal. And the number of positive, 20.8%. And uh, both uh, Asian anal HPV positive and the HPV positive and abnormal anal cytology, 12.6% in women who got into this study. And uh, so uh, they decided to look at, uh, at the uh, um, if, if this study uh, can be performed in Russia. So we took a small group of women, 37 women, and uh, 
for co-testing cytological research uh, from the uh, mucus, uh, uh, so with the liquid acetology uh, and uh, then uh, HPV, uh, high, high oncological risk of HPV, hybrid uh, capture, uh, uh, they only validated for rectum. No test, uh, PCR test, uh, Roche or Abbott or whatever, other tests uh, no, are no, uh, not validated for rectum. So 37 women from 31 to 56 uh, then broke down into two groups, just like the previous study, you see high risk uh, with the uh, cervical pathology in history, LCL, HCL, cancer, and CIDO. And uh, every, uh, everything be, uh, uh, above LCL was histologically confirmed, so they uh, took uh, the, uh, the material from rectum uh, mucus and the liquid uh, c c cytology digestion test. Yeah, I think you all recognize uh, all those uh, uh, materials and prep stain, and that's how the uh, uh, the, the the device looks uh, to uh, see the uh, HIV DNA, and these were the results that we were getting. So look, uh, the normal. 37 women again, 76 percent uh, normal. Uh, in the group without cervical pathology, normal anal cytology uh, well was uh, seen in 100%, AIN in 24%, and then AAC US uh, were quite uh, numerous because uh, uh, th those uh, pelocytes uh, look different, probably in that localization, they are not so comfortable as in the cervix. And HPV positive, 36%. Uh, we see 16% of the total number. <clears throat> so we had to compare with our foreign colleagues' data. So our sampling was not uh, big. Uh, the study was not uh, long. So what were the conclusions? The logical research uh, from the uh, rectum mucus uh, with uh, uh, li liquid-based cytology with that ATP and uh, so in low-risk group was 0%. Cytological research of the uh, study of uh, mucus of uh, rectum uh, with uh, uh, AIN and the positive digestion test in high risk group wa amounted 16% against 12.6 of those who uh, 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 who were studied in uh, abroad. So look at the clinical case. Uh, it's always interesting. I'll be happy to. A patient, 1991, a young woman diagnosed with LCL CIN12, confirmed histologically. Uh, so PCR tests showed PCR, PCR. So the clinic, uh, uh, the, the hospital researched in house uh, HPV of 16 and 18 type, uh, oncoprotein test. Uh, that's a predictor. I remind you, cancer predictor, and uh, the uh, 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 suppressor protein that shows uh, that the cancer mechanism has already been launched and HPV entered the uh, whole cells, and no matter what you do, oncogenesis will uh, uh, start and will. It was negative, and the treatment. Uh, uh, was never had never been made before the test, uh, and uh, when we started rectum, we saw the uh, discreo cells uh, weakly uh, manifested A in one, so anal intraparietal neoplasia, then uh, uh, HI, uh, a, a HPV digen test uh, 1589 again. Uh, so 0 0.0 and below is negative, 0 0.8 to 1 is. Uh, um, uh, uh, unclear and uh, above one will be uh, so the clinically significant virus is positive 1589 I believe is super positive oncogenic risk so number uh, clinical case number one uh, patient 1974 uh, uh, so CIN12 HPV 16 type, uh, so I just took it from the uh, uh, history. So that I'm, I'm, I'm uh, that telling you what uh, what the doctors gave her, alakin, impiron, prenisone, whatever they did something. So ascus uh, rectum at that time uh, uh, there was no experience, not enough experience, and uh, so looked like that. Digen test gave us 203, not so high as uh, in the previous clinical case, but still. That's how 
the well, let's say it's look in the indirect or I, I think you 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 can recognize uh, so uh, the they are quite clearly seen with all the signs uh, um, that that show that they confirm so that's uh, uh, so that's what anoscopy gave us. That's how histology, histology looked. Uh, clinical case number three in the group of companies. Uh, so we call it a checkup. Uh, so first, uh, when uh, the patient come without any complaints, uh, no clinical uh, uh, um, manifestations, but he comes for a study. She comes for a study, and a patient, 1953, with a, just just for a general study, they took material from rectum, biomaterial, and then it was very unexpected when we saw the papillar structure, and we suspected the anal uh, squamous cell carcinoma, squamous, yes, and digestes uh, turned out negative. Certainly, we made histology, and that's how it looked the beauty look at that beauty so i think that now people have enough experience of uh, liquid-based cytology to see those changes that's how histology looked and probably uh, she just you know was lucky to come on time for a regular test and uh, to have this research we hope that the quality of life probably at least will not be worse and uh, after each uh, uh, yeah, case you you need to make conclusions. You cannot do work for the sake of work. You know, what is the practical value? Why is it necessary? The probability of uh, anal um, uh, 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 yeah, pathologies are much higher. Sixteen percent in the HPV pathologies, uh, cervix. Uh, 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 the, these are high risk patients of anal cancer, and should be tested regularly. HPV in twenty five percent. Uh, in uh, low risk patient uh, actually confirms uh, there is need uh, to screen uh, rectal cancer uh, and identify neoplastic pathologies uh, through liquid based cytology independently of uh, uh, the HPV epithelium leisure in the history of the patient. So, and as for the future, you know, it's individual. So, coming to the next chapter, we shall talk about the probably most popular study in any uh, research is the urine test. And, uh, billions go through the labs, and the urine for atypical cells get to your lab and you understand uh, what you are going to see in the sediments uh, and the tumor or pre-tumor pathology. And then, uh, then the patient will know virtually, be sure, efficiency, efficiency of this study is not that high. What could we do? Uh, well, uh, I say again that a Billion, you know, uh, every year we have billion urine ur tests, uh, so no one is diagnosed especially for a typical cell. In order to uh, raise uh, the efficiency uh, for pre-tumors uh, of uh, uh, bladder, you many labs uh, are equipped with uh, certain. Uh, equipment uh, that's automatic analyzers of uh, sediments uh, stations special urine stations of various uh, producers in particular we have sysma and uh, uh, so it uh, it uh, counts red cells uh, white cells uh, bacteria uh, saline saline content and then wonderful parameter uh, for cytologists that small round cells small round cells including the transition and the liver epithelium like urethelium of uh, 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 so the the, 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 the the renal cells and epithelium uh, which should not be there. That's how the standard uh, result looks that we get from this analyzer. And you see in ellipse, you see the epithelium uh, of trans, uh, the, the renal, and we have uh, uh, the benchmarks. And uh, uh, this patient has 7.9 cells per microliter, which is much higher. Uh, than uh, normal. And it's clear that a billion uh, urine tests were made and Sysmax does not require, uh, or any other urine station does not require for one research. Uh, yes, we, we, you, you, it will see this, it will, it will give you this parameter, no matter you order or not. Just pay attention, focus on this uh, result. This is a patient that is a candidate for uh, further studies by my colleagues.
Uh, so uh, now we are uh, talking about the bladder cancer. So the cost of treatment is 96,000 to uh, 187,000 from the moment of diagnosing to death. And uh, uh, so the factors. Uh, um, uh, we can we can uh, have many we can name many risk factors, but HPV is one of them. Uh, HPV loves both cervix, rectum, and bladder. Uh, from the point of view, uh, infection happens in the uh, little triangle with the metaplasian uh, epithelium, which is very vulnerable for. Uh, uh, for for this for the for the virus, uh, and uh, then relapse. You you can appreciate. Uh, oh, yeah, you can see. And the uh, virus infection. This is HPV, is very uh, uh, high both in tumor and in normal epithelium. So the question. Uh, uh, so is uh, HPV important for uh, urothelium oncogenesis? Uh, so. Uh, in 1995, uh, doctors started thinking about uh, the connection. <sighs> uh, a bit too fast here. Yeah. So uh, the probability is five to six times higher. The, the, so international group of experts uh, selected over 20 uh, works uh, researching the role of HPV uh, in uh, uh, the bladder cancer. They were just looking how many uh, HPV positive uh, women had cancer, bladder cancer, and it turned out from zero to virtually 82 percent. Uh, and then uh, there was a cascade of studies. The Iranian uh, researchers showed that in 35 percent of sample of uh, uh, of uh, the tra tra so in bladder there was a 18th uh, prevailing type of virus. And uh, so I have to bow to Netherlands uh, because it's their material from 107 patients with uh, uh, bladder uh, cancer in different types discovered in 15% of the patient DNA of high risk type in 8% of cases. Mm. But what about uh, Russia? What about, about Russia? Uh, so do we get uh, uh, HP, uh, so HPV from the carcinomas in Russian patients? So, so the DNA 16, 18 type and 50 percent displeasures uh, and carcinomas in situ or bladder. So then other types of viruses, uh, so then genetic material availability of these viruses have not been elicited. And uh, so it was the particle was partly published in 2012. The screening of 130 samples of uh, uh, cancer bladder uh, from different group of urological uh, patients identified with the. Uh, uh, so then we always confirmed, uh, confirmed, uh, uh, confirmed the, the expression of virus uh, oncological uh, uh, protein E7 of HIV 16, HPV 16. So then I, we identified some morphological normal urothelium uh, from uh, uh, elderly patients died from non-oncological uh, pathology. Uh, so maybe they, they have not yet lived uh, to the appearance of their own uh, uh, HPV-associated uh, uh, bladder, uh, cancer bladder. Uh, maybe they did not live too. And so then the role of HPV uh, uh, has been proven. And uh, so the neoplastic uh, changes uh, of the bladder. So we have a good instrument that allows uh, to see uh, a lot of uh, cells. And then there is a question how we can possibly sort of cytologically enrich the, the examination that we are doing right now and do the research. Uh, so when we, when we study uh, urine for atypical cells. So there are many, uh, many, many types of uh, of, of, of study of the uh, blood, blood cancer, but they are needed only then when there is a suspicion for the cancer. So the sedimentation uh, for a typical, the, the sediment of the uh, of, of the urine uh, for a typical cells. Uh, uh, so then oncoprotein P16 uh, INK 4A with the help of uh, immunocytochemistry. So this is uh, urine, so we have equipment. Uh, so then analyzer of the sediment of the urine. Uh, and then we have sure path, but then we have the auto stainer. Uh, uh, we have it available as well. Uh, and that, uh, so then it could be uh, any time uh, immune uh, uh, 
so different so some 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 work on uh, live on live cells and and then some use uh, uh, slides uh, then we have the different types of uh, equipment as well so that's the way the specimen are prepared uh, so that we get uh, so we have seen this picture so the first all the urine so go through the equipment uh, so then the then the patients uh, who have statistically uh, increase of this type of uh, patients they're taken out and then they're put in special vials uh, the urine is put and then uh, it's not only due for the whole company and so they send from all the regions whatever they identified so we collect uh, so we have the transport special special vial and bring to the laboratory for the follow-up study uh, and uh, so then you can see uh, so the uh, so I heard the application of uh, 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 so when I heard about this method of uh, 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 this uh, 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 so this double staining, uh, we use the P16, uh, and. Uh, uh, and then several uh, cases, uh, 67 years of age, uh, the medical history, uh, hematuria, uh, no pain uh, related to a lot of salt. Uh, uh, and uh, so then 2012, so start to complain many years ago. In 2012, I identified three uh, tumors uh, of, the, of, the, of the bladder. So resection was conducted. So during the hospitalization, when we studied the uh, urine for oncoprotein 16 in for a sedimentation was done uh, so they started uh, so with the base of liquid based histology so they did the staining for p16 we identified the expression of these plastic cells so cystoscopy uh, was prescribed so 15 small uh, uh, tumors so we did the surgery and uh, and then chemotherapy so that's what uh, cells look like and uh, so then there is a brown expression. Uh, this is a positive expression of P16 uh, of the urethelium cells. Uh, and another 83 years, uh, 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 macrohematuria. Uh, so then the tumor of the bladder on the, on the resection was done. Uh, and uh, anastomosis was conducted. Uh, and then ureteral uh, cancer, so high, high malignancy rate. and. Uh, and uh, an intrusion, intrusion, and uh, and, uh, and and enhancement. Uh, so this is even more obvious. You can say then uh, uh, nuclear cytoplasmic expression. Uh, uh, Roche Corp was done, and uh, I think that that's the only approach that we could do, and so it's not related to any uh, producer. Another woman, 66, uh, uh, polyp, uh, uh, polyps of the bladder, uh, cystoscopy, uh, high level of uh, uh, malignancy of cancer, that's what the cells looked like. And uh, here we stop at, uh, I showed you the uh, slides of 2012, in 2014, so we had a new breakthrough where uh, so we started talking about this study of phenomenon of appearance of hyperexpression of p16 uh, so in uh, in this in the in the cancer cells of bladder so the factors that uh, identify expression of p16 in 4a uh, in the cells of bladder may be different uh, from uh, from hpv positive uh, cervix uh, and uh, so then the uh, gene INK4A uh, uh, is, is deleted uh, and the point uh, mutations uh, it's subjected to this uh, that's why it cannot be it cannot be used alone so that is why it could be at the level of the uh, uh, of the pr of the protein or it could be suppressed or the marker that we used for two years cannot actually be used as a marker uh, for a HPV associated urethelial cancer so because the deletions of the gene so when the cell cannot synthesize this protein uh, so were identified in 50 percent of the samples of the bladder cancer so and it's not 100 percent diagnostics and uh, so now we started to look four ways out again urine uh, uh, for small round cells uh, and so then starting the sedimentation so p16 again but we add another uh, another study here that uh, everyone knows about that who are who know immunochemistry and that uh, the immunochemical analyzer is connected to it and uh, and uh, mm. And so this is cipher 21.1, so which is done not from blood, but has a reference and made of uh, made of made of urine that is in the in the bladder where there is possibly a tumor. 45 years um, in 2012 hematuria. The the ultrasound identified exophyte urine. Uh, 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 
with the scammers metaplasia. In 2013, when we studied the bladders, we identified the positive signals in the tumors of uh, cl clinical relapse. Papillary dystology uh, gives inflammation. Uh, in 2013, the relapse uh, uh, surgery and car carcinoma with a low potential of uh, malignity, malignancy. Another, so they do cipher. Uh, uh, so in your in urine point uh, two five point two in blood one point one. And uh, so no indicator uh, of increase, it's not there. So then in the urine, it's 5.2, 5 and the norm is 0 to 4. P16 positive signal, cystoscopy, uh, so the urine 5 millimeters, then, and then the urine uh, 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 cancer has been identified. And uh, so there's a big, uh, big, uh, 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 so you can see that this is urine, it's always there. Big magnification. Uh, uh, so what, uh, uh, so then uh, for practical urology, so then uh, then prove a proven uh, HPV for the bladder cancer. So n new possibilities uh, for prevention, vaccination of both boys and girls. Um, and then the, if the cer cervix uh, is the girls, but, but bladder is the boys. The, the bladders have both boys and girls. Uh, so the bladder cancer, so we need to pay attention of the clinicians to identify the possible, how they, they get uh, HPV, get, get, get there in the epithelium of the bladder. And uh, so on the basis of the methods of uh, pre-surgery examination of, uh, of possible bladder cancer patients, uh, we need to, to test for APG, HPV presence uh, and, and do the catheters and, and do, so how else can you actually transfer uh, this uh, HPV from one patient to another? So we need the ways of uh, transfer needs to be identified. Uh, so we need just to, so then, uh, so HPV positive, uh, low molecular uh, substances that inhibit the expression of HPV. So then there will be another category that uh, will be different. Uh, uh, and so there will be additional added specific therapy in future. Uh, so that will allow us to make patients well much earlier. And uh, eventually, uh, so what we are coming to. I needed to. Uh, so this, is, this is not gyne gynecology, so it's liquid based diagnostics uh, in the diagnostics of uh, endometrium pathology. So, what, what, what good can we get here? And so, I will put the material in the vial for liquid based uh, cytology. Uh, so we studied in the mitron before, for sure, so we put it on the slide, but the clinicians and gynecologists uh, who uh, took uh, samples of uh, in the mitron and cytologists, uh, they realized that uh, that uh, if it's uh, diluted with blood, so the fragments of uh, in the mitron are very difficult to interpret, and uh, that is why, uh, so then, uh, so then, uh, so then the Sabit lab has not identified anything, so this, it's, uh, it's not honest. And so that is why it's mostly uh, for uh, uh, the uh, 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 law enforcing authorities. So, and uh, uh, so then so I told you why they take the samples for biopsy uh, and put it in formalin, uh, because they put it in transportation environment that can, can maintain safe this material for different types of study. And uh, so the initial stage is they transport uh, a mixture of spirits uh, in the vial that allow to keep the, uh, to keep the cells uh, in normal condition uh, for many studies. And as you can see, the vial that we use, uh, what, ca what can we do? So the pro pro proper cytological study can be done. So we put it on the slide, and it just dried on. So then there is a response, no response. And then and the, it's over. The, we can the immunocytochemical, so immunochemical study can be done. Immunocytochemical study may be done. Then the receptiveness, uh, sensitivity, sensitivity of endometrium to steroids, sex hormones, it can be done too. And then autoimmunity of endometrium, so it can be done as well. And identify them as so the predictor of development of uh, endometrium uh, adenocarcinoma. I think that histologists uh, uh, so will think high, highly of them. And then what we managed to do recently is and then out of mixture of spirits, we identified uh, uh, a DNA of the viruses and bacteria. 
uh, and uh, uh, expressed this uh, without taking the material to mucolytic. Uh, uh, so the old, all the material that is put in this vial so it allows to do the complete checkup of endometrium uh, as, uh, even before hospitalization. Uh, so then the assays, what gets endometrium uh, uh, aspiration biopsy, uh, uh, so then, uh, or, or the high steroscopy with biopsy of endometrium, or after scrapping, uh, 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 scraping, uh, 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 of uh, of the uterus uh, uh, or the chorion scrap, so that's the pregnancy uh, uh, week uh, eight or nine, and uh, if uh, so if in case of miscarriage, uh, uh, and and then we can take the scrape, uh, we, can, we can scrape the placenta as well. It's only for liquid based cytology. So formalin cannot be excluded because because no DNA bacteria from formalin cannot be expressed in any way. So then the protocol of the study, so what is in the study protocols? Standard morphological uh, endometrium includes, uh, so then the cell composition, uh, uh, so then uh, so then menstrual, uh, menstrual type, uh, uh, ATP infiltration, uh, infl inflammation uh, in, uh, in light microscopy. Second block is an immunocytochemical study, as so we can find markers uh, uh, of different set of CD20 cells, 56, 138, HLA, they are. So each marker is very important for the endometrium. Uh, uh, so then, uh, 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 so because uh, it, so it actually proves uh, the virus nature uh, of it. Of, uh, so then progester, progester, progesterone and then index of prophylactic pro activity. I'm not going to read all. Uh, then the, the material just is taken for PCR study, uh, so we can do the biosynosis uh, of uh, the cavity of the uterus, and uh, so pathogen, uh, 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 fungus, uh, streptococcus, uh, staphylococcus, uh, then sexually transmitted disease can be done, uh, so only with the one uh, PCR assay once taken. Uh, and then viruses, uh, herpes, uh, herpes, uh, uh, Epstein-Barr, cytomegalovirus, uh, and then it's this HPV as well that plays a very important role in endometrium as well. Uh, and uh, so we identify oxidilisteri and mycobacteria. So we started this study in 2009. And uh, so, uh, actually, so the importance of persisting uh, 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 herpes group uh, and HPV p p p and pathogenesis of, uh, uh, of non-fertility. Mm. Let me remind you that that HPV has two types, and so this productive. Uh, 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 which is the formation of candelome that never brings uh, about the cervical cervical cancer and the transforming. So if they're lucky, it will uh, bring his patient through different dysplasias and eventually end up with the uh, with the with the cancer of the cervix. So then, as in HPV, uh, it does not uh, exclude the proliferation me mechanism and it does not uh, transfer the endometrium into the secretory phase of menstrual cycle. And then, the, so then, with the presence of estrogens, it uh, it activates uh, the receptors of progesterone, which does not allow the proper implantation of the embryo. Polyps grow, the polyps grow, which is uh, uh, the uh, so then the polyps that ac accumulate uh, two, two tokens and and they launch the cascade of inflammation, uh, uh, cascade in the midrim. Uh, then gistology. Histology is possible to be done in necessary, so the material could be transferred to histology department, and done. And, and histology analysis should be done. So, how to prepare this specimen, uh, this sample? Uh, so, the material put in vial. It goes through the same uh, set of stages. Uh, so, to prepare the assays. And uh, so you can see that that's what endometrium looks like uh, on the slides. Uh, so then, uh, so the endometrium is in there. And uh, so then I uh, took these pictures. And uh, so you can see that uh, so the stroma reaction, uh, so the smash, you can see this smash. And uh, so then immunostainer DACA we use uh, as immunocytochemistry in the top right hand corner. And then uh, 
and uh, inspired by the work of the Kolakova uh, Hospital. So then we, did, we decided uh, uh, to give this uh, definition of uh, uh, cl 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 chronical endometritis, uh, which brings about the destruction of the cyclical transformation of endometrium and the loss of receptivity, rece reception. So uh, what are the diagnostics of, uh, of uh, uh, chronic endometri endometritis? Uh, endometritis histologically only done in proliferative phase uh, of the menstrual cycle on the basis of morphological and uh, immunochemical uh, 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 signs of inflammation. Uh, so plasma cells. Uh, so then there's uh, fibrosis, uh, uh, focal fibrosis, arteries uh, change, all these criteria. So we know them for many years. And, and uh, so then we need to remember that the detection of plasma cells uh, uh, without staining of the plasma cell will not become a plasma cells. And uh, so then a light microscopy so activated uh, lymphocytes, so lymphocytes uh, of the lymphoplasma phenotype, uh, uh, so proven with the help of staining only in uh, uh, immunohistochemistry uh, study. Uh, so then in hospitalization, uh, so with the diagnosis of chronic endometritis, endometritis, so there were only 3% of patients. So these are manifestations of chronic endometritis, but the biopsy results, because biopsy is not only for chronic endometritis. So, but, uh, so then there was another diagnosis, so then uh, so the, uh, uh, so 2 to 19%, uh, so which uh, is in concordance uh, with the population data. Uh, so now, uh, so the chronic endometritis definition has changed. Uh, so because we are progressing, so chronic endometritis autoimmune process, uh, which has inf infiltration of endom endometrium and a uh, cells, B lymphocytes, and activated lymphocytes of HLA-DR, uh, and then the breakdown of reception expression of stromal and epithelial um, uh, uh, cells uh, uh, by the sex steroid in endometrium. So, so what is the role of immunocompetent cells in creating optimal conditions for implantation and placentation? So CD56, CD20, CD16, they're all different. So different power. Why those cells, first uh, uh, NK cells are primary, these are the killer cells, CD56 certainly. And in the proliferation phase, uh, they will be up to 8%. In the secretion phase, up to 70%. But their goal is immediately uh, tied to progesterone, and uh, then they migrate to, to tissues, uh, producing inter, uh, interferon, and they uh, they provide the necessary opportunity to remodeling of cells. CD20 is our guard, cytotoxic B lymphocytes that, that should look uh, after NK cells, their reduction, and more killer cells like 16 and activated lymphocyte. Then uh, next, uh, there is activation of embryo toxic uh, response uh, with hemat uh, with uh, with the blood clots and uh, thrombosis and uh, uh, my, uh, uh, like lack of microcirculation and then uh, miscarriage. Even if not miscarriage, uh, then you uh, observe the uh, placenta deficiency, which we see from the article of 2017 on Mr. Balhanov. And. Uh, well, um, um, autoimmunity is, uh, well, let's uh, drop it, uh, but uh, after that, well, uh, the function starts suffering, the changes, the receptor comp receptors composition, which does not allow to uh, fertilize or once fertilized will not allow to stay in the uterus and come to you with the healthy child. and. Uh, in 2006, uh, some authors prove, prove, have proven that uh, the inflammation is opposite to express expression of steroid hormone. At all the stages, uh, there is a sharp increase on the ninth day of menstrual cycle uh, or through lymph plasma site, or site uh, infiltration, and by the 19th day, by the uh, uh, by the window opening, the uh, uh, receptors' uh, expression uh, goes sharply down, and uh, the, the plantation window 
turns out inefficient. If in the, in the, after the inflammation uh, there are sclerotic changes, then the progesterone expression goes down, down sharply as well. And then estrogens will be uh, uh, pronounced over the whole cycle. So clinicists and morphologists have their own c c criteria where they're sure that the chronic endometritis is there or is not there in 2008. In Cicinelli, uh, studied uh, over 2,000 women with chronic endometritis, uh, suspected 20% uh, in women, and histological signs only in 88%. Only 88% had. But uh, there is a reliable hysteroscopic uh, marker as micropolyps uh, that uh, that that. Uh, are surrounded by epithelial component uh, and uh, lymphocyte accumulation. And uh, they uh, emit cytokines and uh, launch uh, inflammatory re re reactions. Uh, and uh, so you see that, that, that this the marker of inflammation, chronic endometritis was confirmed histologically. And then why am I uh, uh, telling you to make this biocenosis. Uh, this is diagnosing the chronic endometritis. In 70% of cases uh, uh, with the chronic endometritis, uh, there are uh, relatively pathogenic aerobic, anaerobic uh, uh, microorganisms. In 2006, chlamydia were uh, considered to be the first uh, as 15 uh, percent. Now, somehow, chl chlamydia only uh, account for 4 percent, uh, but you see the genital uh, herpes uh, uh, and Epstein bar and other. So the question is, uh, is the uh, endometri endometrium sterile? In our uh, obstetrics institute, so we the, the, we are publishing now an article uh, with the role uh, description of a relatively pathogenic microorganism, and included women. Uh, so remember, we used to blame chlamydia, and uh, you know. Uh, 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 well, youth mistakes, but now streptococci, garnerella, enterobacteria, enterococci. So for the first time, people are getting the patent, and then uh, it's not every bacteria uh, from uh, the uterus so will be able to sustain the fresh air. And uh, it's very difficult uh, to cultivate strict anaerobic bacteria, so PCR is the more sensitive method. People get the patent, and we are getting the chance to have the to, to perform the liquid based cytology and uh, we used to say that uh, no, it's only intervention on inflammation uh, uh, abortions and things uh, uh, violate the sterile nature of uterus uh, but uh, if that would be true you know we would not get pregnant because sperms uh, sperm usually um, uh, penetrate uh, through cervical uh, liquid and we get our children. So why if uh, uh, every, uh, 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 even the sperm can drag a microorganism to the uterus, so why not every woman uh, develops endometritis? Most probably and he got Nobel Prize for that idea. There are special receptors uh, uh, who protect, uh, well, uh, congenital uh, um, and antimicrobe resistance uh, that, that do not allow to penetrate and uh, spread in the uterus. And uh, so briefly, a little clinical case, 38 years, no pregnancy, two years uh, uh, on developing pregnancy, uh, preparing for uh, artificial insemination, hysteroscopy, pipal biopsy, uh, morphological, uh, 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 chronic endometriosis recommended uh, uh, comprehensive research of biocenosis. You discovered Gardnerella and vaginalis, whatever cervical channel, clean. The patient went to the antibacterial therapy and physiotherapy in March 18, got pregnant uh, without any artificial uh, methods, uh, then uh, progressed and then gave birth in 38 weeks. 32 years, another clinical case, no pregnancy for 11 later, three years, two inseminations, a natural uh, 2017 hysteroscopy, biopsy of endometrium, and we see histological research, uh, some uh, fragments of regenerating endometrium, some 
multi-layer flat epithelium, well, looks good, but in 2018, an attempt to carry embryos, no pregnancy. September 2017, pyobiopsy biopsy of endometrium, a cytological picture, late proliferative phase with morphological criteria, discovered uh, some, some components. And uh, we recommended biocenosis of uterus. So we uh, suspect if someone lives there. And you see, it's a zoo, enterobacteria, streptococci, a chlamydia, whatever, you name it. And uh, antibacterial, antibacterial and physiotherapy, February 2018, pregnancy uh, progressed and uh, uh, and a timely birth. And uh, 31 year, uh, micropolyps and the matter is 16 non developing uh, crea conservation. Uh, uh, look, uh, uh, discovered Epstein Barr and uh, uh, HPV as enterobacteria, as well as you see here for the first time the receptors when they look at the uh, those. Then after the, another research, uh, another study, after uh, treatment and embryo, and 21st uh, day, so embryo was, uh, yeah, inadequate uh, implant implantation with, so presently pregnant, 13 weeks gone. And uh, extreme case, I believe, very telling. Uh, I'm very, yeah, 22 years old, a woman, chronic, uh, frequent uh, uh, her herpes infection every three to four years. Uh, she, uh, in 2016, uh, undeveloping pregnancy, then uh, uh, miscarriage, uh, then 17, 23 weeks miscarriage, uh, death of a fetus, uh, then right uh, uh, right side pneumonia, 16 weeks of uh, syndrome of uh, systemic uh, coronary neonate uh, inflammation, inflammatory reaction. Uh, 14 weeks of happiness until she uh, starts bleeding and miscarriage. 17, 18 weeks uh, 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 and systemic inflammatory reaction. Uh, then powerful antibacterial therapy and 2707, uh, so fetus dead, uh, intrafetal, yeah, death. Uh, and then we made all tests, acute amniotic infection, flebite. When uh, the first test came and mycoplasm and garnerella, so what kind of, you know, uh, uh, nasty mycoplasma it was, uh, you know, to, to not to respond to the latest antibiotics that we gave her. But when we discovered cytomegalovirus, probably we got it clear. That's why low amniotic fluid, pneumonia, complaints to uh, 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 other things, herpes. Uh, and uh, we see this herpes, and this is uh, owl's eye. And uh, once we diagnosed uh, during the first pregnancy, the history could be much nicer. Then we got the results from the dead fetus and uh, the placenta. Thank you for your attention. Olga Valerievna, we thank you so much. So please take uh, some, take a breath, you know, and we have little time to ask some questions and a question to Anika. Anika, I will uh, ask you to come back. And uh, Natalia Nikolaevna will come up with it. Dear Anika, thank you so much for the presentation, for sharing ex your experience with us. And my question, the coverage of women is probably the main factor of the screening quality. Is that right? And I have a question. What coverage of women and what's the coverage of women that you achieve? And how can you ensure the adequacy of coverage, the mechanism, you know? How do you make the women to cover all, you know, as much, as many as you can? Yeah. Oh, here. Um, yeah, thank you for your question. I fully agree with you that the coverage rate is uh, one of the main 
parameters that um, uh, influences the success of the screening program. Um, in the Netherlands, the, the average coverage rate is um, for years uh, between 70 and 80 percent. And actually, uh, if you look in uh, Europe, there are about six countries that have um, centrally organized, nationally organized programs, and they are all um, in this um, um, uh, proximity, so between uh, 70 and 80 percent. Um, that doesn't come by itself. It is not easy to let people in this quantity come to a screening program. And it is also the reason that if you look at the distribution of the finances um, in, the, um, in, the, in the countries, then this, the nationally organized screening programs put a lot of money into the organization of the screening program. It means there is a whole organization in the country that, that takes care of inviting the woman, that also reacts if the woman does not follow the invitation, so they get a, a re-invitation. In fact, the, the, the biggest part of the finances at, at, in those countries and also in my country, goes to this organization and does not go to the laboratories and uh, the tests themselves. This, this, is, this is a very important part. And we know, we, we all tried to do it without uh, this organization, um, but it doesn't work. And none of the countries um, that have uh, that put th this amount of energy in the screening organization is so effective in, in getting the people. So um, uh, th m most of the people that have not centralized programs, they are in the f at, at best at around 50 percent of the coverage rate. Oh, we thank you. We thank you very much. We are very lucky in this room because the lecture that we had today are actually unique and not from the point of view of what we may find out about European experience and no secret that the question uh, what is primary HPV or cytology? Uh, yes, it's discussed everywhere globally. There are uh, numbers of questions. So that's why after the session here, you can speak privately to our presenters. What Olga Valerievna told is absolutely unique for Russia because we all are accustomed to study and uh, exchange experience in cervical research. But Olga Valerievna told us about the, the amazing data. I believe it's the first time Olga Valerievna agreed, consented to talk to us, to tell us about the, 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 the scope of activities in the mother and kids centers. Are there any questions to Olga Valerievna? Then I thank you very much for your attention for the session today, and I wish you best of luck.